Hi, I'm Nathan from FTC Team 4717, and today we are going to go over the basics of assemblies using the Group and Fasten Mate tools. So to start out with, I've created this document, and I have several part studios in here um, that we're going to work with and put together into an assembly. Um, so for this first one, I just want to attach these two pieces together, um, just how they are in this sketch, uh, exactly how they are here with the holes lining up. Um, so the first thing you have to do is create an assembly. So the same way you would create a new part studio, you just go down to this little plus button here, and then you go up to create assembly, and it'll create a new assembly. And I'm going to drag mine over to the end here just so it's separate from my part studios. When you start a new document, it will already have an assembly um, down here, uh, but if you need to create a new one, you can just press the plus button and create a new one. So first things first, we want to insert our parts so I'm going to press the insert button and you can see up here we're on the current document so I can go over to some other options like other documents standard content we'll get into that a little bit later but now I'm going to stay on my current document um, and I'm just gonna simply click the parts that I want to put in this assembly which right now are the fasten mate parts so if I click on there uh, you'll see it'll go um, into our assembly and it'll move around with my cursor and you can put it uh, you can move it around over here it's not super exact where it's going to go um, so what you can do is if you just press the the check mark without clicking anywhere on the screen uh, so you just go up here press the check mark it'll put it directly on the origin point um, so that origin in the assembly will be sa the same as the origin point in the part studio um, and then you can see you can still move things around uh, it's not actually fixed to that origin that's just the starting point of where it's where it's inserted into um, but if you want to fix that you can right click on whatever part you want to uh, hold in place and you press fix and you can no longer move it and as you can see I can still move around this gray piece uh, because I didn't fix that I fixed the blue one so I'm going to undo just to get that back in the right place um, because I did create it in the part studio lined up just how I want it. Um, so to make these parts uh, not move at all, because uh, I can move this gray piece, uh, I'm going to click this group tool and then I'm going to marquee select. So I'm going to click and drag over these two parts. You can also just click them in your instance tree. Uh, and then I'm going to click the green check mark. Uh, to confirm and now those pieces are stuck together and uh, if you didn't fix your piece originally so I'm going to right click and pick unfix um, so if I didn't fix them in the first place uh, now they will both move together no matter which one I click on and drag um, but I'm going to leave it fixed in the center there um, just because that's generally good practice so one thing you might be thinking is what if I didn't create my parts lined up in my part studio um, that's an easy fix. You just have to use something called a mate. This is the system that Onshape uses. It uses mate connectors and all of these different mates uh, to put pieces together so you don't have to use the group. You don't have to sketch them and extrude them in the right place in your part studio. Um, so the way that you do that is first of all, I'm going to delete these so that I can start fresh. Um, and I'm going to insert. I'm still going to use the same pieces for right now. Um, so I'm going to click this drop down. And you can see I can insert these parts independently. So I'm going to click on my blue piece, and then I'll just click anywhere in there, and then I'll click on my gray piece, and I'll click anywhere in there, and then I will click the green check mark to insert those parts in. And so obviously they're they're moving independently, and I want to put them together. So I'm going to go up here to this tool, which is the fasten mate, and the fasten mate holds two pieces together pretty much how that group tool did it it'll hold things exactly where you put them so you can't there's no degrees of freedom uh, you can't rotate you can't do anything like that so I'm gonna click on the fasten mate and then I'm going to click on two points that I want to hook together and here you can see the mate connectors that on shape uses it'll snap to important points on this part um, as you can see, there's some on each of the corners, each of the sides, and over the holes. For this one, since I want the holes to be together, I'm going to click on the holes there. I'm going to click on this first hole. Then I want to connect it to the corresponding one on the other side of this gray piece. So I'll click on that hole, and it will 
uh, put those two parts together. And then I'm going to press my green check mark to confirm that. Um, and now these two pieces are hooked together. So it's really simple. It does the exact same thing as that group tool. Um, but if you didn't sketch it in the right place, or if you didn't create it in the right place in your part studio, uh, you can fix that. So you might have seen when we inserted our part that there are these other options up here. And one of these options is standard content. So I'm going to click on standard content. And what standard content does is it allows you to put screws, nuts, and uh, other structural pieces into your uh, assembly so you don't have to create them in another document or um, download them from somewhere else. They're all already in Onshape. Um, so the first one that I'm going to use is um, a screw. So I'm going to go to the bolt and screw option in this drop down. Then uh, you can change all your options. I'm using a 632 screw um, and I've already set my length to 0.75 but I could change that if I wanted to. Um, and there's all these other uh, options, but I'm going to keep all of mine mostly default and I'm going to press insert and you can see that it's dragged this little screw in here and I'm going to do another one because there are two holes uh, so there's your two screws then just like with the other parts you click the green check mark to confirm and then I am going to use the fasten mate once again uh, to actually connect these screws into the hole um, what you can see on these screws that we just inserted is there are these little mate connector symbols. So even if I'm not in the fasten mate, um, they show up. So Onshape has placed these in there, and Onshape automatically puts them into their standard content. So I'm going to use the fasten mate once again, and you can just click on those mate connectors, um, and it's it's just like the snap points, um, but they've they've just placed some there, uh, and they're always visible. Um, and then I'm going to click on this side of the hole and you can see that screw is now in the hole. I'm going to do the same thing for the other screw. And you can see this one, um, the screw is in backwards. We selected the correct mate connectors, uh, but it is in backwards. So one thing you can do to fix this is this flip primary axis tool and that will flip it around in there um, and get it put in correctly. And then you just press the green check mark. So now I'm going to insert some nuts in here um, and that you do that exactly the same as the screws by going to standard content. Then you can change from bolts and screws to nuts. And once again, I'm using a 632, but you can change all of these settings here. And I'm just gonna insert two of those. Then I'm going to press the green check mark. And then I'm going to use the fasten mate again and just click on these mate connectors and put them um, onto the hole. I'm actually using the hole, I'm not putting them, I'm not mating them to the screw, um, but it'll do the same thing. So I just put it on the end of the hole and then I'll do the same thing with the other nut. And once again, you can see this one is backwards, so I can just press that flip primary axis button and then confirm that. And so I've now put those nuts on the ends of the screws. Um, and all of that moves together as one piece. I, I can't separate any of that because there's a fasten mate holding that all together. So now I'm going to fix these in place. Uh, and then I'm going to show you one way that you can edit your mates um, to change them up slightly. So uh, the same way that you would edit a sketch or an extrusion in a part studio, you can double click on your mates and it'll open them back up so you can change all the settings. The first thing that I'm going to show you is this reorient secondary axis button. And that'll just flip your mate 90 degrees. So it'll rotate around the Z axis. Um, so I'm going to do mine... I'm just going to click the button once and you can see that it's it's uh, got the pointy end down um, so that changes at 90 degrees. The next thing is the offset and this will allow you to move your mate around. So I'll just show you what that looks like. I want to move mine on the Z axis which you can see over here uh, is pointing that way. Um, so I'm going to move my nut out on the screw. Um, so I'm going to change in my Z axis, I'm going to put negative 0.1 inches. 
and you can see it comes out a little bit on that screw. And then if I press the check mark button, um, that will save all the changes and my screw is a little bit out. So if you don't want a part mated flush on the side of a part, um, you can use that offset tool. So that's it for the fasten mate. And next time we'll go over the revolute mate uh, using these two parts at the bottom. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.